The Ryan Tuberty Show on RTE Radio 1, sponsored by Sky Fibre. Introducing the Sky Broadband Tech Team, dedicated broadband experts ensuring you get the best customer service. My next guest is a professor of modern Jewish history and Holocaust studies. She made her own history when she took on one of the world's most famous or infamous Holocaust deniers, David Irving. Her story is the subject of Denial. This is a movie that's going to be in Irish cinemas from Friday. It stars Rachel Weisz, it stars Timothy Spall, and it stars our very own Andrew Scott. Uh, Deborah Lipstadt, good morning. Nice to talk to you. Same here. Thank you for having me. What an extraordinary story. I had the pleasure of watching the film yesterday, which brought it all into context. But would you do that for our listeners, please? Sure. And and maybe Uh, tell us when, when, um, uh, take it from the point, possibly, where David Irving turned up at that talk you were giving in 1996. Yes. um, I had published a book, came out in, uh, I think, 1995, here in in the United Kingdom and in uh, Ireland and Europe, um, and it was a, a book explaining who Holocaust deniers are, what their motives, what their modus operandi, uh, their MO, as they say, was. And in it, I devoted about 300 words to David Irving, saying that he was a, a Holocaust denier, that he, in contrast to many other deniers, knew the truth, but he bent the truth to fit his pre existing um, ideological worldview and his his Nazi sympathies and his anti-Semitism. Um, when the book came out here in England, he uh, sued me for libel. He dragged me into court. And the story of the case and the story of the film Denial, um, in which I'm privileged to be played by Rachel Weiss, is the story of that legal battle. Um, and it's a battle about deny, Holocaust denial, but it's also a story of a battle about truth and facts and fictions, which I'm sad to say has an eerie relevance to today. Yeah, the resonance is, is profound and, and uh, well felt in, the, in recent days, let alone weeks and months. And we might go there in a minute, but I suppose uh, the roads for us uh, lead to the moment when David Irving pops up at that uh, lecture you at were that giving. Lecture. Uh, I, was, yeah. I was giving a lecture at a community college in the Atlanta area to students who knew relatively little about the Holocaust. And I was explaining who these deniers were and uh, that they were motivated by anti-Semitism, by racism. Uh, and conspiracy theory, etc. And suddenly in the middle of the lecture, David Irving, uh, and I happened to mention David Irving once, I think, in the lecture, and he popped up waving a hand fistful of bills, of uh, dollar bills, saying, I have $1,000 here if anybody can prove that the Holocaust happened, anybody who can prove that there were gas chambers. Or, or, and, and he continued to disrupt and I, was fa- I faced a terrible dilemma. I do not believe in debating with Holocaust deniers. It would be like asking someone, an Earth scientist, to debate um, someone who says the Earth is flat. Um, you know, it would be asking a person of the history of the American South to debate someone who says slavery never happened or slavery was really not a bad thing. It was really a very great thing or something like that. Um, it's, it's, you, or to debate someone who said, you know, the, the earth goes around, the sun goes around the earth instead of the earth goes around the sun. It's a ridiculous proposition, and, and you just don't debate liars and people who make things up. So I didn't want to get into debate with him because to the students sitting there, the couple of hundred students sitting there, it would look, well, he, she says one thing, he says another thing, you know, sort of even-handed. And yet I knew if I kept silent, it would suggest that I couldn't answer him. And it was a pretty difficult moment. And subsequent to that, I think he thought um, he could take me on. I wouldn't fight him. I'd be scared of him. And that's when he sued me for libel. And the libel case, of course, is where we're going to go now. But but just as you're talking there, Deborah, uh, I'm struck by the quote that I was talking about earlier on in the week that somebody mentioned about from Daniel Patrick Moynihan, the late senator, talking about people having the right to their opinion, but not the right to the facts. Right. Uh, and, and do you believe that? Do you believe that, that some people, regardless of how ludicrous their, 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 their pronouncements are, that they are entitled to those ludicrous pronouncements? Look, I think there are a number of things here. I was a great fan of Daniel Patrick Moynihan. He was my senator, um, so I was privileged to even be able to vote for him. Mm-hmm. But I would amend his statement slightly. Um, you're not entitled to your own facts. You are entitled to your opinions. 
But if that opinion is based on a lie, uh, you can say it's my opinion that the Earth is flat. So let's debate your opinion that the Earth is round. But your, the Earth is round is not an opinion; it's a fact. So uh, yes, people are entitled. People are entitled to believe in lies, um, and they're even entitled. I believe in. Free, I'm a free speech, pretty much of a free speech um, advocate. You know, a, a, almost a fanatic free speech person. Um, I don't believe there should be laws outlawing Holocaust denial. Uh, I think the antidote to bad speech is more speech and good speech. Um, but that doesn't mean that. Um, you give a denier, you know, like the the, the uh, leading newspaper in Ireland should give a denier a column on the day of Holocaust Memorial Day for someone to say, well, I believe in the Holocaust, he doesn't believe in the Holocaust, we're going to be even-handed. Or for the university to invite someone in to give a lecture or something like that. The same way you wouldn't invite someone in to, to, to argue that the earth is flat. You know, they're free, to, they're free to make their speeches. They're free to say what they want to say. Um, I don't want the politicians deciding what can and cannot be said. Um, but that doesn't mean we have to give them a platform. Let's talk about the libel suit, Deborah. Of course, uh, Irving issued a libel suit against you. And it, according to the movie, at least, there were suggestions that, you know, people would have said to you, you know what, don't give them the attention. Settle it. Get out. There were a lot of people who said that to me. Uh, there were some people who were frightened, um, who felt that even if I won, he would win because he would get all this attention. Um, and, uh, you know, so it would be a really a victory for him. Um, and uh, there were other people who thought it wasn't worth my time. Don't worry about it. it uh, everyone knows he's, he's uh, jumped on this uh, denial bandwagon and nobody takes him seriously. But first of all, you, if you're sued for libel, you can't just say, oh, I decided to ignore it. <laughs> You know, mm. um, second of all, um, if settling, those people who said I should settle with him, that means I would have had to sign a piece of paper saying, I hereby apologize to David Irving for claiming he's a Holocaust denier. He clearly is not a Holocaust denier. I apologize. I, I will give, uh, I think he said 500 pounds. He offered to settle with me uh, to a charity of his choice. And I agree that all my books in which I talk about him that are unsold or sitting in the warehouse should be pulped. I couldn't do that and look a survivor of the Holocaust in the face, look a child of survivors of the Holocaust in the face, or look in the face of anybody who believed in truth, who believed in you don't play with facts, who believed in, uh, you know, that there are certain things that are true and you just don't negotiate on them. So I had no choice but mm. to fight, and mm. I put up a very good battle. You sure did. Um, and, uh, but it wasn't that hard. I mean, it was, it was difficult. It was arduous. What we had to do, though, was follow his footnotes back to the sources. So each time he said, I have a document which proves there weren't gas chambers, or I have a document that proves that Hitler really loved the Jews or whatever it was, uh, you'd go back and look at the document, and it never proved that. It never said that. Mm -hmm. It was, as uh, Richard Evans, our uh, lead historical witness, called the tissue of lies. Yes, and, and, you know, just to remind people that Irving was talking about things that, like the fact that he says Hitler never planned to kill the Jews, no Jews died in gas chambers, exactly. Auschwitz, etc. were not death camps. Hitler was the best friend that the Jews had in Germany. And uh, the, and as, as you say, the court case took place. I was surprised that the British Jewish, Jewish community were not willing to open their wallet to you. Well, they did eventually. There was the lead, this was, these were some people in leadership positions, mm -hmm. very, very philanthropic people, very devoted to the community. And the truth of the matter is they were frightened. They were frightened. They had lived with this man for a long time. They were frightened, and they thought, he's going to get more airspace. He's going to be on television. He's going to be on the radio. He's going to be in the newspaper. So even if you win, it, we lose. Um, and um, Anthony Julius, my solicitor, mm. um, who at that point, having just uh, you know, represented Princess Diana, mm -hmm. had a pretty high profile, he believed you don't back down when you encounter hate, expose them as haters, expose and he said, I'm only interested in one article, uh, you know, in the newspaper, judge rules in Deborah Lipstadt's favor. We get that article, we get a good, we get a judgment which shows that he's a liar, 
everything else falls by the wayside. And Anthony Julius was right, and Richard Rampton, my um, barrister who represented me so beautifully, my QC, um, was believed that as well. Uh, you know, when we watch the footage of, of the death camps, and particularly when they're being liberated, and the bodies and the awful images that, that you can't unsee, and maybe that's not a bad thing for the purpose of history and, and humanity and so on, um, where, where's this man, Irving, coming from in terms of the, the denial of these things? I mean, you went to visit Auschwitz, you know the score, you've, you've, you've yeah. seen, you've heard the stories, you spoke to survivors. I, I can't understand the mindset or the face, in the face of such truth, such horror. You know, I, I feel the same way, and yet whenever I'm perplexed like that, mm. I say, look, I can't understand the mindset of the people who did this, so that there are yeah. people 70 years later who um, are they, they're fans of the, of, the, of the Nazis, they adulate Hitler, mm -hmm. they're anti-Semites. We shouldn't be surprised. It still is surprising. Maybe it speaks to our basic uh, humanity or our naivete or both, um, but I'm always surprised. But um, there are racists, there are homophobes, there are, um, you know, anti-Semites, there are Islamophobes, there are people who, who, who are prejudiced. Think about the etymology of the word prejudice. Prejudge. Yes. I made up my mind, don't confuse me with the facts. I see someone, I know that they're shiftless and lazy. I see another person, I know they're rich and powerful and conniving. I see a, a pretty young blonde woman, I know she's dumb. You know, some people laugh about that, but it's the same kind of mm. prejudice, mm. you know. Um, no one's out to, to annihilate pretty blondes, but it's a terrible thing, you know. Prejudice is a horrible thing. It, it destroys the person who's the subject of it. And anti-Semitism, uh, which Holocaust denial is a manifestation of anti-Semitism and of racism, is uh, an example of that. I'm, I'm jumping between the court case and then other ruminations, but 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 that, I hope that's working for you, Deborah, and appreciate Fine. you no rolling up that. But let me ask you again about the court case facing David Irving, Irving in the flesh. Was, was that difficult for you, or did it just add grist to your mill? I think it just added grist to my mill. When I came in there uh, to the courtroom, I, I knew, based on our historian's report, based mm. on the following backup to the footnotes and his sources, how much he lied, how much he manipulated the truth. Um, I just wanted to expose his lies to the world. I didn't want anybody to think, oh, well, you know, maybe there's something to what he says, or it's not so terrible. I wanted to show, you know, it wasn't just for the history of the Holocaust. It was for historical truth. You know, if, if this truth can be manipulated, any truth can be manipulated. And, you know, we have denial all around us. I've been in Rwanda a number of times. You know, the people who deny the Rwandan uh, genocide and say, oh, it was just the civil war. Mm -hmm. And the people who deny the Armenian genocide. That was the original case of denial. The Turks still deny that it was a genocide. They say it was an uprising when we know it was a genocide. Um, there's so many horrible things that people want to deny. You know, the, um, uh, the Japanese denied that comfort women were used, forced into prostitution during World War II. Um, there's deny inconvenient facts, mm -hmm. inconvenient history. When history is inconvenient, when it puts a pressure on you, it's easier to, not, to deny. We recently had something um, in the United States, uh, um, uh, uh, Michelle Obama, then the First Lady, mm -hmm. gave a very powerful speech at the Democratic Convention. Mm -hmm. And she said, I live in a house that was built by slaves. Mm -hmm. The White House was built by slaves. And um, I have the privilege of looking out on the lawn and watching my two daughters, beautiful, young African-American uh, women, play on the lawn with their dogs. You know, what? It, how far we have come. Well, the next night, a leading news commentator said, oh, well, yes, the White House was built by slaves, but those slaves had lived in good quarters, and they got three square meals a day. Uh, so it wasn't so bad. And you, know, you can't, they were slaves. First of all, if, they, if their work wasn't up to the standards of the foreman, uh, they could be sent to the Louisiana uh, cotton uh, sugar cane fields, which was horrible work. Yes. Second of all, they were slaves. They couldn't decide, you know, I don't want this job. I want another job. They were owned. Their, their person was owned by someone else. So to say, oh, they got three square meals and they were lived in good circumstances, 
is to sort of, you know, deny what happened. It's, it's soft-core denial. It's not denying that they were slaves, but it's making it look all right. You know, we had a, a, a representative of President Trump just a few do- days ago mm-hmm. saying, I believe in alternative facts. Mm, yeah, you know? I was going to bring that up, and and I will I will towards the end of our chat. But okay, it's so just I, I just want to go back to a point you're making because I, I, as it happens, I happened to visit the Louisiana sugarcane fields in in summertime, and I was struck by what the tour guide telling us that the 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 punishments that were inflicted on the slaves there were so out there and so gruesome that Hitler and his henchmen took notes, as it were so that that could help them in their punishment well, of the not, Jews. I did not know that. I did not know isn't that. Isn't that, a, isn't that a, a phenomenal connection in your... Yeah, in, so, in, so, so, you know, when you say, oh, wasn't this slavery, it wasn't so bad, they got three square meals yes. a day and had a, had a good dormitory to live in, uh, you know, making it sound like it was a college ex- expedition or yeah. something, university <laughs> uh, trip to go build the White House. Yes. I mean, it's a horrible thing. And, and facts are facts. Look, I, I'm speaking to you in Ireland. You know, the Irish, the history of what happened to the the Irish has been so maligned and so rewritten. I've been to Ireland a number of times, and every time I go, um, I'm really struck by how the history has been misrepresented, you know, um, uh, and certainly in terms of, you know, Irish immigration and why those immigrants came and what was going on in Ireland. Yes, yes. Um, history is not... You can debate why it happened. You can debate how it happened. You can debate who was responsible, and mm. that's whether you're talking about the Holocaust, whether you're talking about the Irish famine, whether you're talking about any uh, slavery or lots of other things. You can debate how it could have been fought or how it could have been um, better dealt with or things like that, but not that it happened. Yes, and, yes. And, um, you know, we just had, yeah, we, it just, it, 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 it creates, out. People feel I can argue anything if I feel it strongly enough. Stephen Colbert, you know, um, yeah. American comedian yes. and really social commentator. Mm-hmm. He's much more than a comedian. He talks about truthiness. Yes. You know, if I feel it strongly, it must be true. It's dangerous. Well, you know, uh, let's let's bring that up then. The the, the Kellyanne Conway co- comments that we've been talking about quite a bit this week on the program. Uh, there there is a ghoulish if you like, timing of this film coming to Ireland on, 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 on Friday, uh, wh- whereby there you have the, the point that she made about alternative facts. I mean, that must have sh- sent a shiver down your spine. It, it, I looked at it, I just, my mouth hung open. And I was so glad that Chuck Todd, yes, the, he went for the it, interviewer yeah. who was, who, to whom she said it, mm. called her out on it. But I was just sorry for one thing. He said, those are falsehoods. Those are falsehoods. Not lies. Exactly. Yes, I said the same thing the next exactly. day. What is the problem with people and that word lies? Lies, that's exactly what it yeah. is. And the press now, the New York Times said, you know, uh, White House lies. And uh, we had something even more dangerous a couple of days later because they were arguing about something, how many people were at the inauguration. Who the heck cares? Mm. You know, I mean, it was true that there were fewer people there and they were saying there more. So it shows a certain attitude towards the truth. But um, a few days later, uh, uh, President Trump was meeting with congressional leaders, and he said three to five million undocumented Mm -hmm. aliens, probably called them illegal aliens, I don't know what what word precisely he used, uh, voted, and that's why I lost the popular vote. Yes. Now, there's no evidence. And if you were undocumented... And you were in America without proper documentation, illegally, as it said. Um, would you take a risk and go and vote where you could be caught and where, you know, the authorities could turn you in one, two, three? It'd be crazy. And there's no evidence nowhere, no place is there any evidence. It's been debunked. It's been disproven. Um, but he said it. And he said it so much so, and it, it the the one of the leaders of the Republican Party in Congress, um, not a fan of Trump, but still a leader of the Republican Party, said, "Stop it! You're creating doubts in the minds of the American people about the democratic system." People are going to say, "Oh, I voted, but my vote didn't count, or mm-hmm. votes don't mm-hmm. matter." Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's a terrible road and a, a dangerous road mm-hmm. to go down. Yes, alternative and, uh, alternative facts can lead to an alternative universe, which can that's right lead that's to a dystopian right. existence. Let, let me ask you then, if I may, Deborah, I'm, I'm conscious I'm, I'm taking a lot of your time. 
But let me ask you, if I may, about uh, the court case. <laughs> we've got to go back to why we're here in some respects. And that is the, the judge uh, and the judge's uh, findings. What did he say that uh, heartened you most? He said, you know, that first of all, he he called David Irving every name, so to speak, in the book, for every synonym for liar, a liar, a falsifier of his history, someone who misrepresents truth. His connection to truth is tendacious, and he does it deliberately. Yes. And then he went to the gas chambers in Auschwitz, and based on the evidence we had proven, which were, we had demonstrated, which were documents in court, which were testimony by perpetrators, by victims, by bystanders, by the people who built it, you know, and, and docu- all sorts of documents, that there, he said, and I'm paraphrasing here, there, no reasonable person can doubt the existence of gas chambers in Auschwitz. He called him a racist. He talked about his anti-Semitic positions. Um, he, there was not a leg left standing. You know, he, and the, that night on the radio, he, on the television, he went on and said, oh, the judge ruled in my favor. He just didn't mis- he misunderstood certain things, you know. So as I said to Anthony, and Rachel repeats it in the in the movie, um, you know, before he was just a Holocaust denier, now he's also a verdict denier. So for me, that was very, very reassuring. Um, we still have to fight it. We still have to remind people. That's why the eerie, I think you used the word, the eerie timing of this film coming out now as people just feel facts don't matter. Mm. I can have my own mm. facts. Mm. Uh, look, I'm speaking to you from from London, uh, where, you know, from the, from the United Kingdom, where they had the Brexit vote, mm-hmm. you know, and there were all sorts of claims, however you feel about the vote, there were all sorts of claims made by the pro-Brexit people about money that would go to the National Health Service, and immediately after the vote, when they were asked about it, they said, oh, well, don't take us seriously, we didn't really mean yeah. it. Yeah, that's, you know, that's are... dangerous. Yeah, sign and of our time. It, it, yeah. We have International Holocaust Memorial Day on Sunday, the 29th. Uh, Denial is in cinemas uh, tomorrow, Friday. And and here we are, how many years after the Holocaust was committed? And, and yet, imagine we're still finding ourselves in a position as another generation, two generations later, still trying to defend uh, the, the dignity of victims. It's extraordinary. It's, it's, I, I, I pause for a moment because it's just extraordinary. Um, and sadly, um, you know, it, it's happening with so many things. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe people looked and said, look, if the deniers can get away with making these claims, and I can make the claims that there was no genocide in Rwanda. Uh, Srebrenica was not a genocide mm-hmm. of Muslim men and boys. <laughs> uh, people just make any claim. And I think there's a responsibility. Holocaust denial, Memo- Holocaust Memorial Day, rather, um, comes with a message, and it's not just a message about the Holocaust, which would be important enough, but it's also a message to all of us that we have to stand up for truth. We have to, and and this is what I hope people will take away from the film, that there's a difference between lies, opinions, and facts. And as Dan, as you said, as Daniel Patrick Moynihan said, you can't have, you can't, you're not entitled to your own facts. Yeah. And the second thing is, when you see bullying, when you see hatred, when you see discrimination, uh, when you see prejudice, say something, do something. There's no such thing as a bystander when it comes to prejudice, when it comes to evil. If you say nothing, then you're 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 in it with the perpetrators. Deborah, it's, it's been a pleasure to talk to you uh, this morning, and thank you so much for your time. Congratulations you. on the thank film. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I enjoyed thank our you. conversation. Keep fighting the good fight. Take care of yourself. Thank you. You sound like you fight the good fight too. So <laughs> great to have you on, on be on your side. It's a pleasure to, to spend Take time care. with you today. Take care, Deborah. See bye you bye. soon. Bye bye for now. Deborah Lipstadt joining us there on the line from the UK. The film's called Denial. Uh, It's a historical uh, courtroom dram, if you want to call it that. And if that's your thing, you're going to thoroughly enjoy it as much as I did. And that's in cinemas as of tomorrow. The text number, as always, 51551.